Some exciting news, the Pokemon Go app is ready to be updated on both iOS and Android devices. There's a lot of big changes in this update, so we're going to break them all down for you right now. The first set of changes we're going to go over are within the trainer page. Entering the trainer page, you see a button we haven't seen before, the menu option. Selecting the menu option brings you to a journal and a customization option. Selecting the customization option allows you to change the outfit and the way that your own avatar looks, which is really awesome because it hints at possible customization options that will be coming for your avatar in the future. Because really, who wants to have spiky hair or a visor? No one wears visors anymore, and I really want to wear this fitted cap. As you scroll down the trainer page, you can see a few different changes as well. The medals now look a little bit different, which makes it a little bit more meaningful. There have also been some changes made to the Pokemon menu. The first thing you'll notice is a font change, which isn't a big deal, but if you click on a Pokemon, you'll see a menu button has been added here also. Tapping the menu button gives you the option to favorite or transfer a Pokemon, so you no longer have to scroll all the way to the bottom of the page to transfer. You can also no longer transfer a favorited Pokemon, so if you star the Pokemon you want to keep, you don't have to worry about accidentally transferring them away. The next changes that were made addresses a three footstep issue. We now no longer have a three footstep issue, we have a no footstep issue, which I don't believe was unintentional. I think Niantic intentionally removed the tracking system in order to ease the stresses on the servers. Niantic made a few changes regarding most of the Pokemon nests. Originally, where you would find one species of Pokemon, they've gone ahead and migrated, and in its place came a new species of Pokemon. We went into detail regarding these nests, which you can find right here. And now we get to the biggest fix that came with this update. Niantic has made some serious balance changes to the battle system. They've reworked moves and their damage so that now fast moves are all comparable to each other, and charge moves deal a lot more damage so they're actually worth using. Let's break it down. <laughs> Before we move forward, I need to talk about damage per second, or DPS. Each move deals a certain amount of damage, but having the highest power doesn't always mean it's the most efficient. Since each move takes a different amount of time to use, you have to look at the relationship between the damage and the duration to figure out which moves deal the most damage per second. For example, Water Gun deals 6 damage, but Confusion deals 15. Water Gun deals more damage per second because you can use it faster, which ends up being better than Confusion. Prior to this update, spamming your fast attack was the most efficient way to battle, and to be honest, that was getting really boring. Luckily, charge moves are finally relevant. Their damage has been updated so that they now deal significantly more damage per second than most fast attacks. The new top 10 quick attacks in terms of raw damage per second are Pound, Metal Claw, Psycho Cut, Scratch, Water Gun, Wing Attack, Bite, Dragon Breath, Fire Fang, and Shadow Claw. When it comes to charge attacks, the top 10 are Cross Chop, Stone Edge, Blizzard, Body Slam, Power Whip, Hurricane, Mega Horn, Solar Beam, Fire Blast, and Hyper Beam. If you want to see a full list of moves and their damage per second, click on the link in the description. Damage per second isn't the only thing you want to consider when it comes to choosing which moveset is best. Fast attacks all charge your stamina bar at a different rate, so sometimes using a move with lower total damage per second results in higher total damage output because it allows you to use your charge move more often. For example, Fury Cutter deals some of the lowest damage per second out of all the quick attacks, but it charges your stamina bar at a faster rate than the other attacks. So, a Kabutops with Fury Cutter and Stone Edge actually has some of the highest damage output because Fury Cutter allows it to use Stone Edge so frequently. Personally, I'm really excited about these changes to moves because they represent the first steps towards creating and maintaining a healthy metagame in Pokemon Go. And if I'm being honest, I wasn't sure Niantic was capable of that because their game design history is pretty short and Ingress didn't have any complicated mechanics that required balance like this. Don't expect this to be the last time moves get tweaked. This is probably something that's going to happen regularly as different strategies rise to prevalence, and especially as future generations of Pokemon get released down the line. 
In fact, since recording earlier today, Fury Cutter has already had its energy generation reduced to bring it more in line with other quick attacks. If you're interested in finding out which Pokemon benefited the most from these changes, we're going to cover that in an upcoming episode. But in the meantime, I've included a link in the description to a spreadsheet from Reddit user Professor Kukui. This spreadsheet includes Pokemon's theoretical total damage output and ranks them on both their offensive and gym defending abilities. Before we end the episode, I want to quickly go over one more thing that changed with this update. Wild Pokemon Encounters. Niantic patched out the quick throw exploit so you can no longer throw a ball as soon as you get into an encounter. They also tweaked the way curveballs work. Now, you guys know I throw a lot of curveballs, and to be honest, I've been struggling with these changes. I've been missing Pokemon way more frequently, but I'm pretty confident this is something I'll adjust to in the next couple days. The post-encounter summary screen now reliably awards experience for throwing curveballs, but the bonuses for nice, great, or excellent throws aren't showing up anymore. Hopefully this is something that gets fixed quickly, because I kind of rely on that extra 50 experience for great throws. To sum it up, today's changes show that even though Niantic isn't actively communicating with us, they are listening. So guys, if there's something you want to see changed, stay vocal, and chances are it might be addressed in the future. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode. The theory is that nests are changing by going back to the previous basic Pokemon in the Pokédex. Before Scyther is Mr. Mime, but we know Mr. Mime has only been seen in Europe so far, so I'm not going to be able to get it here in North America. Before Mr. Mime is Staryu, and there's three Staryu nearby.